Now we're going to be looking at molar masses as well as empirical and molecular formulas. So the molar mass is the mass of a mole. And we've already looked at how to do calculations with molar masses when we were talking about an element. We're just going to be thinking now about a compound. So if we have C4H10, that means I'm going to have four carbons. And I'm going to look up at the mass on the periodic table. And then I'm going to have 10 hydrogens. And I'm going to look up its mass on the periodic table. And then I'm just going to add those up. Alright, so that means my molar mass is that number. Okay, so now we're going to use that into some calculations. So we have an example that says that we have 123.8 grams of sulfur, and we want to know how many grams of S2Cl2 do we have? Alright, so this is going to take a couple different conversion factors. The first thing we're going to need to do is find that molar mass that we just learned how to calculate. And the two coins. And I looked up the masses off the periodic table. So that tells me how many grams are in a mole. Like we wrote it here, grams per mole. So I could write it as a conversion factor like that, 135.04 grams in one mole. The other thing, since I'm looking at S, I know that there are two moles of S if I have one mole of this compound. Because there's two of these in one of the whole compounds. Alright, so the only number I was given was this 123.8 grams of sulfur. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is change that to moles. And I already know the molar mass of sulfur. For sulfur, I know that one mole is 32.07 grams. And that I just got off the periodic table. Okay, now I have moles of sulfur here, so I'm going to put moles of sulfur here. And I have two moles of sulfur for every one mole of S2Cl2. And now I have moles of S2Cl2, and I'm trying to get to grams. And I know that one mole of S2Cl2 is 135.04 grams. So I'm going to multiply all the stuff on the top. And I'm going to multiply all the stuff on the bottom. And then I'm going to divide those numbers. I got 260.6478 
And this is an exact number. These have lots of significant figures. That one's got four, five. This one's got four. So I'm going to use four because that's the least amount. So 260.6 has four, and that's grams. Okay, then we're going to look at empirical and molecular formulas. So my empirical formula is my simplest formula, and it can't be reduced. For example, I could have H O. Now my molecular formula is actually the formula of the molecule. And it is a multiple of the empirical. So for example, I could have H2O2. So this formula is my empirical. It can't be reduced anymore. And this is a multiple of that, and that multiple is 2. Now, it is possible that your molecular is the same as your empirical. In that case, the multiple is just 1. Okay, so now we're going to learn how to calculate this. Alright, so in our first example, they've given me percentages. So they're either going to give you percentages, or you will need to take the grams that they give you and find the percent. Okay, but in this case, they've given me my percentages, and I've put them in the columns. So it told me I have... 35.172% of potassium, it gives me the percent of sulfur and oxygen. So I just put them underneath their particular element. And my first step that I'm going to do is divide each one of these by their atomic mass. So I'm going to look at my periodic table. And potassium is... 39.098 and sulfur is 32.067 oxygen is 15.9994 I'm going to go ahead and divide those And I'm just leaving them out of ways. I'm not running anything in particular. So first step, divide by the atomic weight, or the mass on the periodic table. Next step is I'm going to divide by whichever one of those numbers is the smallest. Now, these hopefully come out as whole numbers. Mine did not come out as a whole number. So if it doesn't come out as a whole number, you have to make it a whole number. So I have to think of something that I can multiply by 2.5 in order to get a whole number, and that would be 2. So that means I have to multiply everything through by 2. So 2, 2, and 5. And these are the subscripts in my formula. So K2S2O5, that becomes my empirical formula. Now 
Now in my second example, they've given me the same thing, but this time they want me to find the molecular formula. So I still have to go through and find my empirical. So divide by the masses of the periodic table. Second step is divide by the smallest. That one's easy. So this one, I can round at 3, this is 1, and this is 1.5, and once again, I'm left with something that's not a whole number. So in this case, I'm going to have to again multiply by 2, because 1.5 times 2 is a whole number. So I'm going to take all of these by 2, 6, 2, and 3. So that means my empirical is going to be C6H2Cl3. Now, that is my empirical. Now I have to find my molecular. So my molecular I know is a multiple, and they have given me this is the mass of my molecular, because this is the molecular mass. So I'm going to have to find the mass of this. So carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. I'm finding my molar mass. Alright, and I got 180.44. So 360 is the molecular. My empirical is 180. So if I take my 360.88 and divide by my formula that I got here, that's going to get me my multiple, which is basically 2. So that means everything in my empirical formula gets multiplied by 2. So 6 times 2 is 12, 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 2 is 6. So this is my molecular formula.